Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Sethem and welcome back to another video. Today, folks, I am going to be taking on the Desert Titan. Um, I've not yet decided if I'm going to be killing it or taming it, so I'll see what I feel like by the end of this. This is the second attempt for me. Obviously, the first one ended up in a bit of failure, and I've made some mistakes in which I've learned from, and so I will let you know about those mistakes as we go on. Uh, so... If you folks enjoy this episode, please do not forget to support me on the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos. Also, why not check out some of my other videos here on this channel? Who knows? You might just enjoy them. And finally, for those interested, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment. As I said, uh, this is my second attempt at doing the Desert Titan. Now, the reason I failed the first attempt was because there are several differences to the Desert Titan. I will obviously go through them as and when those occur. Um, the other reason was because although my Quetzal was initially set to passive, I did carry it in a cryopod here and it seems that when I took it out of the cryopod it went back to attack my target so uh, the build that I have on the Quetzal is designed to stop the flock from dismounting you but sometimes it does um, so it's not 100% foolproof it does work most of the times though very important with the Quetzal before you even start doing anything is to make sure that the Quetzal is set to passive now as you can see it has a normal saddle. This is a bred Quetzal. Nothing special, no mutations. The parents did have good stats. I bred them until I got both of the stats, the high stats, to be on both parents. And then bred them again until I got this Quetzal. It is fully imprinted. As you saw there, we've got the Giga. This one is a Giga with two mutations. Uh, it has a mutation in health and one in damage, I believe. Uh, it also is fully imprinted and has an ascendant saddle not that that makes a big difference because this cave is particularly easy and as with the previous ones uh i will do a full walkthrough of it that includes of course the cave how to get to the artifact summoning the titan and then obviously the fight itself uh with regards to taming or killing the titan the strategy is the exact same uh, we will, or I will explain that once I get to that point. Before I even enter the cave, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable harvesting on my Giga. We do need some meat. It is sort of hungry a tad bit, so give it to me just to have there. It does also help with healing a little bit. And I'm just going to get some more meat on this Giga. Then I'll disable the harvesting because we will be full of stuff that we do not want nor need so let's quickly disable this the cave itself is not very difficult the creatures inside the cave are rather easy to get rid of if you have a giga makes the job that much more easier but you can do it on a decent uteranus on a decent rex there are many creatures that you can do this cave with I will primarily ignore the golems uh, or the rock elementals or the whatever they're called unless they are in my way. If they are in my way, I will bite my way through them. With the creatures that you see in front, the snakes, the bats, I'm only doing it because they are in the way. And obviously they have a hitbox and the Giga will snag on the hitbox. So I'm just clearing out a path for the Giga. I'm not going to go out of my way to kill stuff. And I do want to get this done as quick as possible. Now this might take a bit longer than the other titans. Simply because with the other titans I was able to use a horde of creatures. Primarily Rexes to defeat them. This time around obviously it will be a single creature. And that will be a Quetzal with a foundation on the saddle. Um... So as I make my way through, I'm going to explain to you guys how to set up that foundation on the saddle of the Quetzal because it is quite important. Uh, the reason behind that is by setting up the foundation on the Quetzal appropriately, it will cover your character 
and so will prevent the flock from dismounting you nine times out of ten it can still happen it is not foolproof so do bear that in mind and it is very very important to have your quetzal set on passive because if you get dismounted and your quetzal is on attack my targets it will fly towards the desert titan because you will have to exit the box on top of the foundation to remount the quetzal and that time it will kill you it does have every single chance of killing you so that is a bad bad thing okay so make sure it's set to pass it before you even begin doing this so with regards to the foundation you want to center it with the reins and you want the foundation to be as far as it can be uh, the way i did it is basically place the foundation as far possible wait and see what happens because the quetzal does move and so the foundation will move backwards and forwards get a mental bearing of where it is just about to fall off or disappear off the uh quetzal saddle and just before that click once what then happens is the foundation will snap to the location you get the thing but it's not yet set the quetzal saddle does move and as it moves it will rotate the foundation so time it so that you set the foundation as straight as possible as centered as possible as much forward as possible as you can then obviously what I do is I put a door and a door frame at the front and the back so towards the Quetzal's head and towards the Quetzal's tail on the sides walls and the ceiling on top uh, you can use stone I recommend of course using metal because you may get hit by the uh, desert Titan if that's the case metal is a lot better than stone so very important detail there you do want to make this out of metal to obviously give yourself the best chance the other thing that I wanted to mention is it's very important that your Quetzal has a decent amount of stamina, decent amount of health if you're going for this. You can, to some point, um, neglect damage, but the less damage you have, the more hits it will take from the Quetzal to take out the Titan if you're wanting to kill it. So what I went for was a bread Quetzal fully imprinted because the imprinting bonus does make a big difference then 5000 stamina on the quetzal around 15000 hp and everything else into um damage so that way it does do over 100 damage and even so it will take a decent amount of time to take down the quetzal uh, the desert titan however once you've taken out the corrupted nodes which is what we're going to be doing the desert titan will be knocked out and therefore you can take uh, your time killing the desert titan when you kill the desert titan of course you will get some loot so do make sure that you loot the titan um you might get it on your quetzal you might have to manually loot the titan it's up to you uh, it depends on how the game's working and i suppose on the bugs and glitches at the time of doing it with regards to summoning the quetzal you will need a hundred corrupted heart you will need um i can't remember now what items you'll need 10 sarco skins and all right let's get here and i'll see exactly because i've got it in my inventory obviously you'll need the artifacts from this game as well just making sure there's nothing around that can be dangerous for us So that's it. You need 10 Fire Wyvern Talons. That was the other one that you needed. So what I do is I mount the mount that I came in with. In this case, the Giga. I do have my base set fairly close to where the Titan spawns, but yet out of range of the Desert Titan as it will use its lightning strikes if you set your base close to the Desert Titan spawn location and it will hit inside your base. So I do mount the Giga, then dismount it so that I'm on top of it. And this way I normally tend to spawn very close to it. So as you can see, it's really close to me. I'm going to get on it. 
Obviously, I'm not going to fight the Desert Titan with a Giga, so I'm going to make my way back to base as quick as possible. That's where the Desert Titan spawns, just for those that don't know and haven't done it before or haven't seen it. I'm going to try and get out of here as quick as possible because this is where the Desert Titan's flight path is and it does have that lightning strike, so I do want to avoid that before it gets here. It's not a fast creature, but still, I do not want to risk it. Okay, we've got a few sound glitches there going on. I suppose something's got to give, right? Once I'm out of here, I will then take my time. Obviously, the Giga does not have a decent amount of stamina. It does struggle for that. It's as good at running as I am, which I suppose we have that in common. <laughs> I don't like running, and I'm not good at it. Um, now, I know where my base is. Obviously, I'm going to have to follow the terrain and... Maybe go around certain obstacles to get there. Once I get there, I will put my Giga back in its place and then mount the Queto. Um, with that, you don't really need anything. I do recommend just maybe food and water if you need it. The lightning for the Desert Titan is easily avoidable, as is the flock. And it's very easy to take out the corrupted nodes as well, as you will see in a bit. Um, in the first phase, I will make several mistakes to show you guys what not to do and how I used to do it or how I did it in a previous guide and the things that have changed there is quite well it's a small change but it makes a big difference to the fight itself and that is primarily to do of course with the tail whip but I'll best wait until we get to that point so that you guys can see what I mean Okay, so my base shouldn't be too far from here. So it should come into view fairly soonish now. With regards to my base, because the do tends to have creatures around it, if there's anything that may get in the way or affect what's going on, I will clear out the area. And that's simply because I do not want any creatures getting in the way or complicating the situation as I swap over to a different creature. I'm just going to put my Giga like so. Try and line them up because I am a bit OCD with things being in a specific way. going to mount my Quetzal. Now notice that I did use the S plus items. They do act as metal items in the game so make sure it is on passive before you do absolutely anything before you even take the quetzal out uh, as you can see I do have a base a metal base foundation put as forward as possible centered as possible on the sides there are glass structures from the S plus front and back there are doorways and door and a glass ceiling now the glass structures on the S plus do act and behave just the exact same way as metal now my quetzal does have a decent amount of stamina so i can sprint if i need and want to alternately i can fly at the speed that i am currently flying at uh, obviously the fewer or the less stamina i consume the better for me now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that there because if i kill it i might want to get the dermis i'll have a tech rifle just in case i need it I'm going to take my time. I'm going to try and preserve my stamina. I don't want to land too many times. And to be fairly honest, the Desert Titan is not that fast anyways. Now, with regards to the first node, uh, you can pick whatever node you want to take out. All three nodes are on top. Two of them on the wings, one at the base of the tail. You can only do this for the first node, as after you've taken out the first node, the Desert Titan will then use its tail swipe, which has a very large AoE, as you will see in a bit. I will deliberately make some mistakes so that you guys can see the AoE of this thing. That might mean that I might have to heal my Quetzal, but then so be it. I will then show you how to do it correctly so that you reduce the chances of being hit by the tail swipe. 
Now the way I prefer to do this is to take the first two nodes out from underneath the wings as I find those the most difficult ones to take out and then do the one at the tail as that is the easiest from my perspective obviously different people will have different preferences so I'm going to select a wing I'm going to stay underneath it by staying underneath it the lightning will do this effect on me but if I am close enough to the wing or under the wing the lightning will hit on top of the titan obviously we need to use the lightning to damage the nodes uh, first lightning strike will bring the node out second one will damage it if you hit them one after another now you want to be just underneath the wing where the colors are so that um, fluorescent red coloration and bump you want to be just underneath there that's where the node is as you can see so now once the lightning strikes it should bring out the corrupted node now do bear in mind that the desert titan does also change its altitude as you can see over here i am very close to the titan's hitbox which does also mean that i can get stuck in it temporarily so you might want to be slightly lower than this also you need to match his speed and descent or ascent depending on what it's doing hopefully that'll hit Now, as you can see, and as you will see throughout the video, the flock will not be able to dismount me. So every time it says at the top of the screen you are being targeted by flock, that means that normally it would have hit me and dismounted me. You don't want to get as close as I am to the Titan. You want to avoid these situations as much as possible. Because if the Titan descends, you will then find yourself stuck in the Titan's hitbox for a brief uh, period and I say brief half a minute which is enough for it to actually do a lot of damage mostly and primarily through the lightning because you cannot avoid it the lightning is very easily avoidable you don't need to sprint you just fly away and what I also suggest is change your altitude so either go higher or lower than where you were to the time of the lightning effect coming on you so you do want to change your altitude you'll see me do this many times when I am in that situation obviously avoid the lightning if you can or the like lightning circles so I'm gonna go underneath that little bump I am trying to match his movement and that's what it comes down to this is the challenging bit you have to match his movement and because of the position that you have it can be quite difficult as you can see the wing will get in the way and impair your vision uh, you will have to on occasions make certain guesses as to where you are positioned compared to the node the idea behind this is you want to be just underneath the nodes location so that the lightning strike does hit the top of the titan and either brings out the node or hits the node directly uh, you will know that you are close to destroying the node as the node does increase in size as its health does decrease as you can see i'm trying to stay just above or just in front of the little bump and just underneath the titan's wing okay that was good it hit in the right spot sometimes the titan will stop so that is good because that means you can stay stationary and preserve stamina all right so that one was a bit of a dodgy one what I did there of course was to drop an altitude that should be okay for the moment when you are in this sort of situation do keep your eye on what the Titan is doing the moment it moves you want to go downwards otherwise you'll find yourself stuck in the hitbox of the Titan just like I did now now I am stuck I am trying to get out and it is doing a good number on my Quetzal just look at how much damage my Quetzal took. So you will want to give yourself a bit of space between yourself or your Quetzal and the Titan. Now the Titan is descending so I need to match his descent. Otherwise I'll find myself in the exact same situation. It is difficult and this is where the difficulty is actually matching the descent. Now it is a lot easier when you're doing the tail. Which is why I always leave the tail for last. 
Of course, there are more things to go wrong from my personal experience when you are doing the wings, and so I prefer to take those challenges on first. The tail itself is not all that difficult, there is not all that much risk with the tail, or I personally at least find it easier. So as you've been able to see up to this point, the flock has not been able to dismount me because of how I set up my quetzal. I shouldn't have moved there, but I wasn't certain what was going on. So I'm going to try and reposition underneath. As you can see, the corrupted node is fairly large. Okay, I think that's going to hit. I'm going to try and reposition again here. Oh, never mind, he's moving. So I'm hoping that this will hit. Yeah, it did. So this node shouldn't have too much more to go now. Okay, he stopped. I somehow got hit by that. I'm not sure why. But I did take out one of the nodes. So I'm going to go to the node on the opposite wing. And the same thing there. There is the red pinky fluorescent thing. So it will just be underneath that bump. Now you'll see that because I'm so close to it. When the Titan does the tail swipe it will hit my Quetzal. Which it will stun the Quetzal. So it will basically stay like this. Okay, it didn't hit in that direction that I was, but it's alright. You'll see it in a bit. So what you'll need to do to avoid it is you want to be at the level where... At the same level with the front fin. You want to be underneath the bump and level with the front fin. If you're higher than that, you're too close and you will get hit like that by the tail whip, which does 2,000 damage, or almost 2,000, 1,800 damage. You don't want to get too close. Now, previously I wasn't able to do that. This is a new thing, a new mechanic. Or a mechanic that has been slightly changed. Now, I'm trying to reposition myself because I wasn't happy with the way I was positioned. So, I'll try and stop there just this momentum that the Quetzal has uh, and I'm trying to match it so that I'm underneath the node but once this node is down the one on the tail is quite easy I will of course get hit by the tail swipe again once he does it Okay, so he missed me that time because he did move as he was doing the tail swipe. I'm going to get close to it again. I'm going to get hit again. Uh, it's not a problem if you get hit and you need to run away. Run away. Uh, what you can do is get some meat on your Quetzal, then force feed it to heal it. At this point, I am deliberately taking these hits so you guys can see how close you need to be. In order to be hit by the tail swipe. Now it is possible that at this particular height he will not hit me. I am quite low compared to what I was doing before. But I'm also trying to get as many hits on that node as well. Okay, so I'm going to get close to him again. Okay, he didn't hit me this time. So notice if I am slightly lower and in line with his front flipper in terms of height, I can avoid the tail swipe. 
I get too close to the underwing part, the AoE on the tail swipe will hit me. So let me try this again. I'm quite close now, so if he does a tail swipe, he will hit me. Okay, so he's turning now. Alright, so I got hit there again. Uh, I think I'm going to have to retreat from this point on. I think I can afford just another hit, otherwise my Quetzal will be in serious danger. I mean, it is already in serious danger, but it's alright. It is a carnivore and you can heal it with meat uh, or by force feeding it meat. And I'm hoping that this Um, I'm hoping not to get hit again and that the node does not have too much more to go on it. If I can clear this node, the one on the tail is a walk in the park. If not, I will have to go and heal. 2000 damage per hit, as you've seen there, is a lot, right? That's that. That's me going to heal. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick on several creatures. I am going to attack them, then harvest them. Uh, once I have plenty meat, I will then force feed my Quetzal the meat and help it heal in that manner. Now I did want to do this as a single uncut video, but because I've shown you that, that means I'm going to have to force feed my Quetzal, which of course will take time. I'm not going to fully heal it. Uh, I'm only going to go for somewhere around half and there's a pile of creatures in front of me so I'm going to attack them. They should be fairly weak and shouldn't take too many more hits for them to die and I'll harvest them after they die with the Quetzal. As you can see my Quetzal does 182 damage uh, and of course as I said at the beginning of the video using the imprint to boost your stat does help quite a great deal with the Quetzal as the Quetzal doesn't really have a great deal of damage. Alright, so I'm well out of the Titan's range. I'm going to land here on this top right here. And I will start force feeding the Quetzal prime, uh, prime meat, meat, any meat, all meat. Every single meat that I have in my inventory. I'm hoping that uh, what I've gathered so far will take me around halfway health. And at that point, of course, I will get back into the fight. Obviously, this will take some time. And as a result, I will cut that portion out or this portion of the feeding out and I'll see you guys in a bit okay so my Quetzal is healed pretty nicely from all the meat that I've got and so now I'm gonna get back into the fight I'm just gonna give it a few more bits of meat the Titan is still there as you can see it took about 10-15 minutes for the Quetzal to go through all the meat that I gathered so that's about how much I cut out of the video so far. Now during this time the Titan did not get recalled back to the center so it shouldn't have healed. As you can see it is there and it is stationary. So that gives me a good amount of time if it still stays in that position to get underneath the node and get a couple of hits until it moves again. Okay, 
I want to be underneath that bump and in line with the front flipper and that should be good enough okay he's already started to move so I'm gonna try and avoid him for the moment while he is turning I'm gonna try and stay away if I can land another hit on the node I will try it if not it's no loss I don't want to get too close to it don't want to get stuck in his hitbox I don't want to get hit by that tail because it does good damage. As you can see now, this time around, I am in line with the flipper. I am still safe and the lightning is still landing on top of the Titan. On occasions, I will move my camera upwards so I can see where the node is compared to where my Quetzal is. As you can see through the Titan, if you move your camera up a bit. But as you can see, you don't have to be that close to the node to get the lightning to land on top of it. So due to the way the Titan has angled himself, I need to try and match it. And obviously the Quetzal does need a bit of space to be able to turn. There we go. That is the second note down. Okay, so now on to the easiest one. That is the one at the base of the tail. I'm going to try and align myself with the base of the tail. Now at the tail you'll see a bump just in front of me. And after that, there's another bump which has a bit of a um, darker circle. I like to call that the poop hole. So you want to position the box where your character is just underneath or just before the poop hole. So I've gammaed up so you guys can see. Things are getting a bit darker here. So there's uh, two pairs of flippers. As I'm making my way towards the Titan's front not the last pair but the one before that it has a bump and if you look you can see a little dark circle that to me looks like a poop hole you want to be just underneath it or just before it that's where the node is and that's where you want to keep your quetzal now because you can't see the titan's body you can easily match what he's doing at the moment he is descending so i'm going with him okay so he's stopped I'm going to wait here, wait it out. I don't even need to know where the node is because I know that that's where it is if I'm underneath that little dark circle. So that's why I find this one easier because it's easy, there's a clear marker as to where you need to be but also by being behind the titan you can see what the titan is doing and what direction it's changing into or what direction it's going if it's ascending if it's descending and you can easily match it quite quickly it's also a bit more difficult to get stuck in the titan's hitbox whilst that still is possible do bear that in mind so you do want some clearance between your Quetzal and the Titan. So notice that when he starts moving and if I'm uncertain I will just fly away from underneath the tail and then reposition. There's nothing wrong with the coward way. If you think something's wrong then move away and reposition.
All right, so he's now stopped. I'm just going to reflect his movement. I have hit his node. I am quite close to the guy's hitbox. At the moment he moves, I'll need to move as well. I tried to go down a bit just to be on the safe side because if he decided to descend, I would have been in a bit of trouble there. Okay, he has stopped again. So, as you've seen up to now, despite being targeted by the flock multiple times they have not dismounted me however do bear in mind that this is not a foolproof plan whilst it does work say 97% of the times there is still that 3% where they will dismount you that is where the real danger lies of course there's also the possibility of your quetzal being killed but if you're careful you can avoid most of this creature's attacks as you've seen up to now. Um, with regards to being dismounted by the flock, what you need to do when you are in that situation is to, of course, exit either via the front or via the back. I suggest the back of the cage or the box that you are in. Then, obviously, shut the door behind you. Look at the Quetzal saddle. Press E or whatever the control is on the console to mount your quetzal and that is that that is why it's important to have your quetzal set to passive because once you get dismounted if the quetzal is on aggressive or attack my target the moment you get hit once the quetzal will then fly towards the creature that has hit you in the attempt to attack it which will most probably throw you off of the saddle now the titan is unconscious i have destroyed the third and final node as you can see he's not moving anymore there is no threat from him anymore i can of course either kill it or i can tame it to tame it i just go on top of it press e obviously for console there will be another button for that or I can kill it by using my Quetzal to peck it to death. Do bear in mind, it will take some time to kill it, as this thing does have a tremendous amount of health. Obviously, by killing it, you do unlock some of the tech engrams. You will also get some decent quality loot. So as you saw there, that's what you need to do if you get dismounted. Exit the back of the Quetzal. Get on the platform, look at it, press E to mount. Very important thing to know is you can't land your Quetzal on this creature. It looks like it's landed, but if I dismount it, it does this thing, then it falls through it all the way to the ground. But that is what the danger is if you try and land on it. I thought I might as well show you that. Sometimes your Quetzal can get stunned or stuck or hit in such a manner that it will do the exact same thing. So you will have to dismount your Quetzal and remount it whilst it's falling. Which again helps if you have your Quetzal set to passive as you may get hit once or twice by maybe the flock or something else. And you don't want your Quetzal going into a fight, you want to control the fight yourself. Now I am on top of the Titan, the Quetzal is set to follow now. I can choose to kill it by hitting it or I can choose to tame it. I look at it, it says tame kaiju. All I have to do is press E. 
Now, for the purposes of this video, I will of course tame it, and therefore I have my very own Titan. It is that easy to do this. Um, it does take longer than the other bosses to kill due to the mechanics involved in it, but overall it is not all that difficult to do. Now, this video was meant to be a bit of a combination of an episode and a guide. Obviously, since my initial guides on this creature, the Titan has had some changes to it, uh, which I mentioned, and that was primarily around the tail swipe. Also, notice that you cannot land your Quetzal or any flyer on the back of this creature even after you've tamed it. So that is one of the things that you'll need to bear in mind. My Quetzal is derping out a tad bit. Just thought I might as well show that as well. So I'll have it on follow, then take my creatures back to base. And that is it for this video from me. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and haven't already for more similar content. And if you have just subscribed, don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos. Also, why not check out some of my other videos here on this channel? Who knows, you might just enjoy them. And for those interested, of course, you can always find me on the Seftopia Discord. Links to this you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment for myself. Until next time, stay safe folks.